and here we go and this is flash hat in a perfect world without Vinny today on the 9th of July 20 and 19 people we're we're getting there uh, the usual hellos to Grimner thanks Grim and the bots and bodies in the real liberty media.com chat were we all seem to hang out and pass along our vast knowledge. And for uh, it's 2 in the morning out there in Radio Land, so we've got Barman, Beetle, Cowboy Tech, Grimner, Moose Girl, Brackets, DC, Anti, Asmo, IB, Don C, Java Doctor underscore 2, Miss Kate, Rome's Vanna White, Vinny, Weather Dork. Phantom, Circle, Cyborg Noodle, Me, Frumpy, Gromit, Jays, Nines, Jays, Kiss, Kiss underscore, Ponder Gander, Pwn Sauce, Sock Puppet, and Smart As the Bot. And Smart As the Bot is doing pretty good learning, I think, for a robot, you know, doing text on the chat screen. Anyway, we're, we survived another 4th of July. Hmm. So now, I was looking for something to read, and I pondered, I pondered, I wandered upon this uh, link called Are We Really Free? <laughs> Maybe it's time for a personal declaration of independence. And it says here, by Daisy Luther, the organic prepper, July 8th, 2019. And it's on the site called LouRockwell.com. I'm going to post it in the main feed anyway. But this time of night, people are probably not even noticing that I'm on the Real Liberty Media Radio podcast program thing I do on Tuesday. So, I'm going to start my epic tale and read it to you, folks. <laughs> okay, here and here we go. It starts out. Sometime between throwing some burgers on the grill and shooting off fireworks with a beer in one hand and a lighter in the other, ask yourself this question. How free and independent are you? Uh, how independent are any of us, really? We like to think we live in the freest nation in the world. But do we really think about it? You never own your home outright, even when the mortgage is paid off every year, must make your extortion payment to the city, or trust me, you won't be living in the house for long. The same thing with your car. And again, these are not new concepts. These are old, to me, these are old and they've been written about in every possible fashion, but it's kept out of the mainstream. Nobody in mainstream you know, reading materials bothers with any of this stuff. They're too busy with their <laughs> their next war. Anyway, back to the story. Hmm. Ah, the same thing with your car. If you don't pay your annual extortion payments on your vehicle and pay a hundred bucks for a tiny sticker that gives you permission to drive it, it will be promptly towed away by the city with the government's blessing, then like a hostage negotiation gone wrong, you'll have to pay even more money to cover their theft and storage of your vehicle. On a regular basis, you must pay a fee and ask the government for permission to do any number of things, such as driving a car, traveling outside the country, running a business, adding another bathroom to your home, or even catching a fish for dinner. Permits and licenses are being revenue generated are big <laughs> revenue generators from start to finish. Mm -hmm. And if you proceed without asking permission, they will extort more money from you in the form of fines. If you refuse to pay the fines, or if you can't, they'll kidnap you and lock you in a cage where you'll be forced to perform manual labor for 10 cents an hour or whatever length of time the legal authorities feel is sufficient to teach you a lesson. <laughs> now, hold on one second here. 
Oh, lost my place. Okay. There are places in our nation where you can't use your property the way you want. There are areas where you cannot collect the water that falls on your land. There are places where you aren't allowed to detach your home from the grid. There are places that dictate where your vegetable garden can grow. Or, even if you're allowed to have one, places that won't allow you to hang your clothes out to dry, and places that make it illegal to sleep in your car. The bottom line is, some places in the United States are freer than others, but we're all, we're all still serfs paying fealty to lords. I'm sick of it. Did you know that, as a business owner, when I write a paycheck of $1,200 to an employee, it costs me $1,399.91. Hmm. And that, she only ends up with $1,042.12. Think about what we could do, what we all could, what we could all do with an extra three hundred and fifty seven dollars and seventy nine per pay period i bet we wouldn't go out fighting wars on the people's soil with it on other people's soil with it hmm. i bet we wouldn't enrich politicians and weapons manufacturers with it and special interest groups with it i don't know about you but i'm sick of it i'm sick of being taxed locally on the business i created using absolutely no municipal resources of being taxed on the wages I pay to my employees, of being taxed on the car that the bank I own and I own, of being asked for a list of personal property so the local government can tax me on that too. Sick dot of dot it dot. <laughs> oh, this is a girly girl way to write it, huh? And it goes far beyond taxation. Hmm. Hey, Cowboy Tech. I see you in the RLM chat. Ha ha ha. I think I'll say hello there to uh, Cowboy. He He's a late night guy. I don't know if he's going to catch the podcast or not. <clears throat> I do pretty good with the bit shoot though. So I'm not going to sweat it. <laughs> this is my two in the morning show. Anyway, <clears throat> our government isn't really made up of the elected officials that it purports it's made up mostly by people who sell their souls to huge corporations that have an interest in beneficial to them laws being passed and laws that would harm their businesses shut down before they ever reach the desk of the presidents. Well, okay, a little childish there, they suppose. As well, the supposed watchdog entities like the FDA, the EPA, and the United States Department of Agriculture are populated and led by those who have been handpicked to support corporations. No matter what the detriment to the American people whom they pretend to protect, if Congress was like NASCAR, the members would have to wear uniforms emblazoned with their sponsors. However, Washington, D.C. does not have that trans the transparency of professional car racing, so we must guess at the sponsors of our representatives. We are buried under silly laws with the sole purpose of generating revenue or adding to the slave labor force in the for-profit prison system. We must work most of our waking hours to be able to pay for our basic necessities. We are convinced repeatedly through entertainment and social media that we must have things that our ancestors would never have considered owning, much less requiring. They have most people convinced that they must follow the food pyramid, the vaccine schedule, and the rules that force us to have licenses for every darned Thing we do. We must pay for and be granted permission to feed ourselves, transport ourselves, build shelters for ourselves, unite in matrimony, and even to own pets. We're ruled by 
fear and manipulation, like some kind of frighteningly authoritarian parent, they assure us that it's for our own safety. These breaches in our independence and that we must comply or face the consequences. They ground us by taking away our licenses. They send us to our rooms that just happen to be located in for-profit prisons. They don't allow us to pursue life, liberty, and the happiness because once we taste that sweet freedom, we won't want to be under their oppressive thumbs anymore. But some of us have seen the corporate government for what it is. A bully that reigns through fear of reprisal and grievous harm. They hold over us these fears. Dot. We will die if we don't eat things that were inspected and approved by them. Hmm. We will be jailed, fined, or have our children taken from us if we don't tow the line. Vaccinate them as ordered. Medicate them as recommended. <clears throat> We are unable to figure things out for ourselves because we are not experts and therefore we must suppress our own judgments and bow to their far greater knowledge. We will die if we don't follow their expert health and nutrition advice. We'll be murdered by scary foreign terrorists if we don't allow the TSA to fondle our private parts and perform x-rays that show us naked before we fly. Some people fear these things and believe these tales so thoroughly they allow the government to enforce ridiculous unconstitutional laws for our own safety. They say, better that I give up my rights as a human being and save the world from a terrorist. Whether you call it freedom, liberty, sovereignty, or self-governance, the point remains the same. If you're reading this, you probably want to determine your own life, whether the result is success or failure. You want to have control over your ability to live, truly live, and not merely exist as a slave to the powers that be. Well, very merry of her, huh? You can withdraw your consent. When's the last time you read, actually read, the Declaration of Independence? Ha ha! Please allow me to share an excerpt. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable, inalienable blah, 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 rights. I use that word so often I can barely uh, speak it. Hey, Cowboy Tech's on there and Woody's on the RLM. There's a little chatter going on for the late night crowd. Oh, okay, back to my story. Uh, uh, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive, of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes and accordingly all experience hath shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed but when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object evinces a design to reduce them under absolute dis despotism it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. And it continues. Now, I'm not planning to arm up and head to Washington, D.C. to take over Congress, but I am continuing to withdraw my consent in every way possible. You have a natural human right to be free. 
Human beings are born with natural rights. Every single one of us. We have the rights to life, liberty, and property. That was changed to happiness to distract you from property. We have the right to benefit from our own work. And if that's not enough, there's a backup. You also have constitutionally protected right to be free. Mm. The 13th Amendment to the Constitution abolished slavery. This means that if you are a slave today, it's either illegal or you have voluntarily accepted your servitude. Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for crime, whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. Wow, it's a lengthy little uh, link. Wouldn't have had a lot to say. I'm kind of enjoying this. Uh, I'm going to call this the post 4th of July uh, quest. Because I guess that's what the 4th was supposed to be about. Let me sip a little elixir and get back to this epic tale. Hmm. You have a constitutionally protected right to be free. If you aren't free, then revolution is your mother-loving duty. This isn't about guns blazing, militias mobilizing, and guerrilla warfare. It's about small, personal acts of independence. The way you lead your life every single day can be a personal declaration of independence. By refusing to concede your natural rights quietly and resolutely, you are performing a much-needed act of revolution. Hmm. Anyone can be part of this revolution. Many people believe that revolution requires that they lead a march, stand in front of a crowd with a bullhorn, or form a militia. They feel like it's a job for the Julian Assanges and James Wesley Rollins of the world. They're wrong. You don't have to be a person with thousands of followers on Twitter and Facebook. You don't have to be a person with military leadership position on your resume. You need not get yourself arrested on the steps of the White House, go to prison forever for telling an unpopular truth, or stare down a bunch of, ah, the Harleys of summer, or stare down a bunch of scary-looking thugs in jack boots. But, you do have to do something. You can't just sit there and complain unless you really are just another armchair Rambo. The way you lead your life every single day can be an act of revolution. By refusing to concede your natural rights quietly and resolutely, you are performing an act of revolution. Walking the walk doesn't always require civil disobedience or militia membership. It requires your consistent determination not to let others infringe on your own freedom. It doesn't matter if you are a soccer mom from the suburbs, a college student in a dormitory, a church-going dad and husband, or a person who has found themselves homeless through the ongoing economic crisis. By living resolutely, you are performing an act of revolution. Don't get me wrong, we need the Julians, the militias, and the, I guess, uh, JWRs. Uh, I'm not sure which one. That one. <laughs> I got lost in it. Hmm. We need the people who stand in protest. Well, I don't agree with that, to the, to the way that they do it. We need those who expose wrongdoing. We need the organizers, the shouters, the big personalities, and the leaders. Mm. But these are not the only ways to revolt. If every single person was off organizing their own rally, there'd be no one left to march in it. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. What it is imperative upon us to do is to find our compass and follow it. <laughs> we must make ourselves immune to control by not needing what they hand out. We have to be 
armored against the way everyone else lives and choose our own paths. We must stubbornly refuse to participate in the hoop jumping that is everyday life in America. By all of us who believe in liberty doing this, we form an army of stubborn non-participants in the status quo. Random acts of revolution. The most revolutionary act is to be self-sufficient and in need of nothing that the government can provide for you in exchange for some small liberty. This list of, ins of insurrections is by no means comprehensive. <clears throat> Question absolutely everything you hear on the news. Always be a skeptic. All major media goes back to just a few conglomerates. Call them out. When you see coverage that is clearly biased, take a moment to call out the media about it. Take the time to comment on mainstream media websites and point out the unbalanced coverage. If you use social media, share this information and post on the media outlets, social media pages as well. Hmm. Well, there's a feisty little woman, I would say. Get out of the banking system. Well, good luck with that one. By opting to unbank or underbank, <clears throat> there is a limit to what can be easily stolen from you. When you have physical control of your financial assets, you are not at a, as high a risk of losing those assets and therefore less likely to be dependent on the system. Educate others at the very high risk of people thinking you're crazy. It's important to let people know why you do what you do. If you object to a municipal policy, speak at a town meeting or send a letter to the editor of your local paper. If you're an activist, make a point of explaining the reasons behind your activism. But be calm and rational. By ranting incoherently or by keeping your mouth shut, you influence no one. By providing pro provable facts, you can open minds and awaken others. Yeah, good luck with that one. Uh, grow your own food or buy local. Every single seed that you plant is a revolutionary act. That's right. And Grimner and Mary and Circle... Uh, every little bit of uh, gardening we do out there in that backyard is that that's just one less thing that we have to go to the state to get and you're right you know she's right if more people did it put a bigger dent into uh, <laughs> just saying no to these thieves I, anyway uh, back to my epic story this kind of uh, split on it but so far so good all right every bite of every bit of food that you don't have to purchase from the grocery store is a battle cry for your personal independence when you educate yourself and others about big food big agri and the food safety sellouts at the fda you will clearly see that we are alone in our fight for healthy nutritious foods refuse to tolerate these attacks on our health and our lifestyles if you can't grow your own food the support then support local farms you have the right to food that won't kill you forget CAFOs and industrial crops sprayed with glyphosate go local and you'll be feeding your family foods that are wholesome nutritious and unlikely to be subject to recalls like big food keeps launching refuse to comply if you know your natural rights which are guaranteed under the constitution and its amendments which has kind of been put on a back burner you don't really have access to that document in a court of law right now till you get to scotus hmm. to continue then it makes it much harder for authorities to bully you. You don't have to let them search your home without a warrant. You don't have to answer questions and you don't have to comply with laws that are in conflict with the Constitution. 
You don't have to be aggressive or get in a fight with them. You just have to be staunch in your refusal. And they're probably going to more than likely railroad and go right over you and do it anyway. And then when you get to Admiralty Court, well, <laughs> Admiralty Court is not constitutional court. So, well, uh, if you want to push the law thing, good luck with that. Right now, you're, you're, you're not, they're not working with you. They're working against you as a group. So be careful the advice that you take, you know, because we shoot our mouths off on the Internet all the time. And a lot of us mean we mean what we say and we mean well, but there are uh, hidden laws behind everything else that destroy the foundation of this Constitution and uh, the Bill of Rights. So until people come to terms with that and figure out what to do, this is... Uh, Something to think about, but be careful in how you act. You could get yourself thrown in a jail. Mm. Embrace your right to bear arms. Be responsible for your own safety and security. 9-11 should not be your personal security plan. <laughs> Save yourself. Because 9-11, nobody got saved that day. Anyway. Don't be in debt. No one can be free if they are in debt. If you are in debt, you are forced to work in whatever conditions are present for whatever amount is offered, complying with whatever criteria is necessary to keep your job. As well, the high interest rates that you pay only serve to make the bankers more wealthy. Instead of borrowing, save until you can afford something or realize that if you could actually afford it, you wouldn't need to borrow money to have it. If you're already in debt, this article can help you get it paid down fast. Be prepared for disaster. Mm. Have enough food, water, and supplies to take care of your family in the event of a natural disaster. Don't expect FEMA to take care of you. <laughs> Be involved in your children's education. For some, this means homeschooling or unschooling. And for others, this means being on top of what they are learning in a formal school setting. Join the PTA and actively volunteer if your child goes to school. Be an advocate uh, for your child and insist that the teachers teach. If your child goes to school, supplement this at home with this course about current events and outings that help them learn about the world around them. Know that any freedom you give up, you will never get back. Remember that. We lost in the Patriot Act and the Indefinite Detention Act in the AA. Those freedoms aren't ever coming back unless something more drastic than anything I've seen in my lifetime occurs. Maintain your privacy. For the love of crickets, don't be the ignorant fool who says, If I haven't done anything wrong, I don't have anything to worry about. You have plenty to worry about. All information can be manipulated to track you, profile you, make you look guilty, and control you. Trust me, when the social credit programs rolls out here, program rolls out here, you'll have more to worry about than you ever imagined. Stop making excuses for collaborators, the tax collectors who enforce the extortion of your money, the TSA agents who pat you down and dehumanize you. Stop trying to justify their jobs. Stop trying to make it okay. These agents are only doing their jobs. They should be ashamed of themselves for having these jobs. Heck, I've even heard people in line at the airport thank the TSA for patting them down. Wow. Then and fuck that. I will not be complicit in my own slavery. Yeah, well, I had a moment where I wanted a bucket, but in the long run, you're just, you're trapped. It, it sounds really good, but, you know, that's what they want, so that you can act up and end up in a jail cell and not finish what you started. <laughs> anyway. For even more ways to cease your support of a government run amok, check out 50 Ways to Starve the Beast. Hmm, not a bad article. I'm kind of glad I found it. 
As Albert Camus, a French philosopher and author, said, the only way to deal with an unfree world is to become so absolutely free that your very existence is an act of rebellion. Get out there and be the squeaky wheel. If you see something wrong, don't just ignore it. Say something about it. And keep saying and keep saying something until it changes. Whether this is some process that infringes on your privacy, a job requirement that impedes your health, or another injustice. Pursue it relentlessly, ask questions publicly, write letters, and use social media to bring pressure to encourage a change. Yeah, well, that's the, the sad part is so few people want, they really don't want what we would call a change. They just want the chains tightened so that other people will behave better. If you're currently taking the easy way through life, if you recognize yourself as a slave, stop. You don't have to continue like that. According to the Declaration of Independence, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That means that you don't have to accept the unjust laws. This That means you don't have to quietly take it, muttering under your breath, that it isn't right, but not daring to raise your voice. That means that they are only in control of you if you allow it. Independence isn't something you celebrate one day a year. Independence is the way you live your life every single day, refusing to submit to that which makes you beholden to or less than someone else. There are nearly 330 million people in the United States. Only 3% of the population fought in the Revolutionary War and 10% actively supported them. If 9,900,000 people quietly and peacefully revolted by withdrawing their consent to be governed by tyrants, we could not be silenced. If 33 million people supported those revolting, we could not be stopped. The government what might be watching us, but we can watch them right back. Make the way you live your life a revolutionary act. Show people what freedom really means, and maybe it will catch on. Hmm. Well, it's a little girly, I, I would say, but uh, the points made were good. But uh, I think that a lot of people are very hmm, unclear on this uh, constitution, you know. Oh, but they got a constitution, but they don't use the constitution in court until you get to Supreme Court. In Supreme Court, they just waste their time with a bunch of uh, commerce. They don't give a shit about us. They're trying to figure out ways to cut the debt. <laughs> so that was my post-4th of July epic saga about... I don't know, freedom. <laughs> and I got another one. I think I'll do a short show this morning. And what else do we have here for your reading extravaganza? Oh, here we go. <clears throat> I will copy and paste and put it in the reallibertymedia.com chat, but I don't think anybody's going to notice. I think I'm alone in the world right now. Boo hoo hoo. Anyway. Yeah, Major, okay, this next epic saga is called Mayor Pete Buttigieg's Friendly Policy Fantasy. Okay, so apparently this is what a, a sitting, a guy in, in a, a power, you know, in, in an office of decision. He's got a dream <laughs> instead of a reality. And it goes like this. In June's Democratic presidential candidate debate, South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg said he is determined to bring about a day when any driver, white or black, has a feeling not of fear but of safety <laughs> when a police officer approaches them. Police abuses are a major issue for Democratic candidates and may derail bootlegs, buttigegs campaign after a recent South Bend police shooting. 
But sensitivity training or re-education classes will not solve the real problem. Politicians have given police so much power that citizens naturally fear them. <laughs> yeah, you think? Has anybody else noticed this little problem? Hmm. In 2001, here we go back to SCOTUS, the Supreme Court ruled that police can justifiably arrest anyone believed to have committed even a very minor criminal offense. Hmm. That case involved a Texas mother who was driving slowly near her home, but because her children were not wearing seat belts, she was taken away by an abusive cop whose shouting left her children terrified and hysterical. Justice Sandra Day O'Connor warned that such unbounded discretion carries with it grave potential for abuse. <clears throat> Unfortunately, there are endless pretexts <clears throat> for people to be arrested nowadays because <clears throat> federal, state, and local politicians and officials have criminalized daily life with hundreds of thousands of edicts. Captain Steve Powell of the Colorado State Patrol commented, 90% of the cars out there are doing something that you can pull them over for. There are a jillion reasons people can be stopped. Tail lights, windshields cracked, any number of things. Forfeiture laws give police sweeping arbitrary power over Americans' wallets cars and homes. Indiana Solicitor General Thomas Fisher told the Supreme Court in 2018 that the government is entitled to confiscate cars that exceed speed limits by five miles per hour, a standard that would justify seizing most vehicles. Between 2001 and 2004, Laman seized more than 2.5 billion in cash from 60,000 travelers on the nation's highways with no criminal charges in the vast majority of cases, the Washington Post reported. <clears throat> Police have been trained to confiscate proper, private property by, of drivers by absurdly claiming that trash on the floor of a vehicle. Hmm. Abundant energy drinks or air fresheners hanging from a rearview mirrors are signs of criminal activity. Blacks and Hispanics have been victimized far more often by such laws. The Fourth Amendment prohibits unreasonable warrantless searches of American citizens, but police have gutted that constitutional right with dogs that will give them a positive alert almost any time they seek a pretext to forcibly search someone's vehicle. The fact that canines are sometimes trained to give false alerts is irrelevant as long as the government always wins. Canine alerts to currency are routinely used to justify seizures even though most U.S. currency has trace amounts of drug contamination. <laughs> There is a long history of officialdom fabricating pretext to stop drivers from 1992 through 2013. The Drug Enforcement Administration illegally commandeered the phone records of all Americans who called most of the foreign nations in the world, as USA Today revealed in 2015. To keep its phone record seizures secret, the DEA partnered with local police to concoct phony reasons for traffic stops that sometimes included staging, fake auto accidents, and even car thefts. Why should citizens trust law enforcement agencies that engaged in of decades of systematic fraud? Uncle Sam has brought the surveillance state to the nearest police car dashboard. Federal grants have enabled many states and localities to equip police cars with license plate scanners that provide plenty of bogus pretexts to harass hapless drivers. License plate readers often misread plates. 
Brian Hoffer was pulled off Interstate 80 in California and handcuffed and held at gunpoint after his rental vehicle was reported as misreported as stolen. Hoffer commented in 2019, I'm sitting ice cold and saying nothing because I don't want any itchy trigger fingers. Wow. A Florida man was pulled over by a Maryland transportation policeman who angrily demanded to know where his gun was. A license plate scan revealed that the driver had a concealed carry permit in Florida, where he had left his firearm. Police spent hours taunting him and searching his minivan before permitting him to move on, leaving his wife and daughters utterly distraught. Well, there you go. That's police for you. The war on drugs and its endless crackdowns and intrusions spurred far more distrust of police, but politicians learned nothing from its debacles. 16 states <laughs> have, <coughs> have raised the smoking age to 21. And there is a push, supported by Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, to dictate a federal smoking age of 21. Why not simply issue a federal mandate for an annual additional 10 million unnecessary confrontations between police and youth? Criminalizing private vices is the surest way to make law enforcement a public nuisance. Citizens are wary of police cars in their rearview mirrors because politicians and judges made average Americans legally inferior to anyone with a badge and a gun. Police almost always receive legal immunity when they unjustifiably shoot people. It is practically a perk of their job. The pervasive corrupts and lies, cover-ups and lies that follow dubious killings by police does more to spur awareness than a million officer-friendly public service announcements can counteract. The best way to encourage citizens to have a feeling not of fear but of safety is to repeal legions of laws empowering police to unjustifiably accost and wrongfully subjugate peaceful citizens. But that is unlikely to happen as long as most politicians are more interested in power than in domestic tranquility. Wow, we kazowie, and I got, let's see, that was uh, another epic little ditty I managed to run across, but, uh, hmm, well, we got Woody, and we got, uh, I think Moose Girl and Woody are still chatting, and Cowboy Tech, <clears throat> they're still chitter-chattering away, but, you know, like they said, this is a fantasy, because the, the laws that are actually being used I don't know who knows what those laws are. You know, you got a group of thugs that sit around and get a briefing in the morning, and it seems like their sole goal is to acquire, you know, shit, stuff, gather. They're like, they're like, um, like fruit pickers. You know, they're they're not picking anything in particular. They're just gathering everything in front of them, and see what they can find. And that's not law enforcement. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Well. I guess it's acceptable now, but I don't like it. So, well, we all know what I did to, to combat the American way. And, yep, I've successfully uh, enjoyed seven, I think seven, or is it eight? Uh, Eleven, so twelve. No, I've enjoyed seven non-American Fourth of July holidays uh, over here on the other side of the, of the Atlantic. And I still get a little bit of uh, a little bit of shit from people about not speaking the Danish, not too much, but you know a few a few people, and their point is well taken. You know I understand what they're saying to me, but I trust my wife to not lie to me. But strangers, eh, here we go. You know, you're gonna you're gonna say what in a bar in a bar setting? You're having a few beers. What the hell do you want to talk about? That's so damn important it requires a, a foreign language to me, not to them. So, I uh, I just figure if people want to talk to me, 
that's fine. I'll talk to them back. Uh, but holding against me for not being able to speak Danish in a, a way that you can understand Danish, they're never going to do that. So they just punk me a little bit. And the more that I live here, the longer I'm on air, the more punking I get. And the, the punking is like a result of acceptance, not it's the opposite, you know. If if they were ignoring me, that that would be the problem. But if they're talking to you and they're making fun of your uh, inabilities or your shortages or whatever, they're just playing around. It's not a serious thing. And then I found out uh, my electrician bartender friend Karsten, won't name him. Uh, he had an emergency thing go down at the uh, airport. He had to go in there and identify some electrical problem. And uh, he was really proud of his accomplishment. He was telling me about it at the bar the other day. And I feel kind of uh, involved, you know, because people are telling me personal shit about their jobs. And and it's not all about, you know, oh, uh, you're from America, huh? blah, 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 blah. There, there's more to the... Um, getting along with people than just what what bit of dirt you're born on and what languages you speak or don't speak and i didn't find any other links to read let me go look on them um, see if i can't find something else because i've pretty much uh, covered my personal shit there's not much to know live a quiet life uh, have a lot of fun for the most part and i stay out of trouble whatever trouble is me and trouble don't mess around anymore uh, the only trouble I guess I would bother with is saying something nasty to somebody on a chat site. And outside of that, no, 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 no. So, I don't know what I've got for the... Uh, I'm going to do an hour today. I try to, but I can't seem to find any other uh, text links that are exciting me. So, I'm going to stall. And if that don't work, I'm going to just call this show a day. And say uh, a happy post 4th of July to one and all. <laughs> you know, may your fruit be sweet and your vegetables be sour. Or something like that. And what do we got going on? Uh, well, anyway, thanks a lot to the group that was here for my early morning rant, I suppose. I will type a thanks everyone and close out of uh, my show. So we got coming up, this is Tuesday morning, <laughs> my Tuesday morning, we have coming up on the RLM, we've got Wednesday and Friday, 7 o'clock on the East Coast, got Graham Z kicks off the rocket chair on the East Coast at 7, and then on Thursday I come back with my own private slow tiny little project I call 20% off, and uh do that for a bit and then Friday sometimes we got um, Vinny comes in with a ponder gander we never know he comes he goes he does this he does that and then Grammy at 7 on the East Coast with a rocket chair podcast and then at 11 o'clock Grimner and Moose Girl do Freakers Ball 11 o'clock on the East Coast and then Saturday I'll be back again with the dork table we had a really wacky dork table this week I think um Vinny and Mary just wanted to clown around and have some fun like we used to in the old days. Uh, we didn't really do much about uh, news or current events, but we sure did a lot of joking around and clowning. And then Sunday morning, Grimner opens up with the blues, and we play some trivia in the afternoon. And then Hal Anthony comes out from behind the woodshed with a big old can of whoop-ass for the crickets at 3 o'clock on the West Coast on Sunday. Monday night, 7 o'clock on the East Coast, Grim Leftovers. Those are the stories he didn't get to on Freaker's Ball. And then, next Tuesday, I'll try to come back with a, a little more thought-out show. I didn't think this went out clearly enough to uh, pull it off. But, got almost an hour out of it today. So, um, anyway, thanks everybody. See ya next time.